Hey guys, it's Danny. Now, believe it or not, I actually feel better. I don't necessarily sound better, it takes a while, but it actually is the first day when I don't wake up with a headache, yay! So hang tight, my voice will return to normal, hopefully it's not very annoying. Today, we're gonna talk about self-watering systems with orchids. Yes, while I couldn't actually talk and film, I didn't want to sit around and do nothing and I played around with a few more ideas of self-watering systems. Many of you responded so well to my little experiment that I did with my Sologeny there and you are already thinking, oh, maybe I can apply something similar to not only epiphytic orchids but terrestrials as well, but also to other plants. There are plants or orchids which simply require a lot of water. I have a few as well which I played around with and you just know they need a little bit more attention and a little bit more time that you might not have. So, because many of you still ask me where I get my plastic pots, the masks, some ideas about where you can find something similar, I understand that these things are not always available everywhere. So, I came up with a few ideas that I hope are a little bit more international and that, you know, will inspire you with your orchids, terrestrials, or even house plants. There is a setup here that I intend to use with my African violets. I think it will be perfect. Rather than spending money on self-watering pots, you'll see. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'll show you a few ideas. I'll also DIY one of these together with you guys. So I'll add a timestamp somewhere on the video. You can skip to this time in the video, and that's where the actual topic will be Again, before that, let me just tell you shortly about my Saturday. It has to do with the subject, kinda. So if you remember, I told you guys that I woke up being splashed with water because of our AC, which we fixed in the meantime, thankfully, and that I woke up, I was feeling sick, I wanted to film that sad video I posted yesterday, I started crying, I couldn't film it, and it just so happened that Saturday was the anniversary of me and my boyfriend, our eight years anniversary. So being that the situation was as it was, he was like, you either stay home and be miserable at home or we go to your favorite garden center and you can be miserable there. So of course I chose go to the garden center and be sick there. <laughs> well, what do you know? On the highway, the car breaks down, starts to spit boiling water from the radiator, nothing to do, but call the insurance and get picked up and sent home. <laughs> We then borrow a car and give it another shot, but what do you know, the garden center was closed. So we decided to stay close to home and celebrate with a nice meal, end of story, because clearly that wasn't a good day. Well, the next day we actually went to the garden center and I found Lechuza pots at a discount. So I'm going to show you these pots today and you'll see they are different than my other Lechuza pots. I think they're an older model and I think flower shops or nurseries are trying to get rid of them because Lechuza updated their products. So maybe they're trying to get rid of stock. If you're interested in these pots, check your local garden center. Maybe they actually have a discount here in Cyprus, they do and I was not aware they actually brought lechuzas. So this is how we're gonna start today's video. I'm gonna show you the other lechuza pots that I have, the current lechuza pots, how they're going currently, if they still work after three weeks or so since I started, and then we're gonna DIY something very, very similar. So let's get started. So here are the three lechuza pots that I ordered from Amazon. They were around 15 euros each. And as you can see, they're not all that big. They're quite tiny pots suited for miniature orchids. I have here a Paphiopetalum, a mini uh, Phalaenopsis, and a Hoeyara Lava Burst. You can see I have different medias in all of them. My biggest surprise was the fact that Lekka was actually staying moist. It is still moist, not as moist as it used to be. You can see the water level is down. I have not watered it in a week or a week and a half, maybe a week, let's just say that, which is amazing because right now it's summer, it's really hot and my grow space is very ventilated. You might hear the AC running. I shut down the fans. So the level of water is really low right now, but I'm very happy with how long it stayed moist. So, as you can see, for a little tiny pot, it does its job even in a terrestrial mix, even in sphagnum moss. Of course, you have to realize that these systems, which are very, very wet, they are safer in very windy or dry or warm environments rather than humid and cold. That's not a good combination for these. 
So obviously not all of you will do okay with these. If you don't need them, don't buy them. But for those of us who live in pretty warm areas, they are lifesavers. So as I was saying, I was really surprised to see that the Leka works because I can keep Leka wet without fearing it will break down, it will stay too wet, I need to replace it within a year and so on. Um, so as you can see, we do have a gauge, I think I called it a gauge and I don't think it's correct. <laughs> so we have a gauge that tells us the water level, we have the pot, we have the wick system, pretty much nothing to it. And if you think that this pot is 15 euros plus the pawn, which I don't use because I don't like, hmm, slightly expensive. Well, before these, Lechuza actually had some bigger pots. They're called Mini Cubi or something like that. You're gonna see one, which did not have a gauge. They're in the back there. And they worked on the same principle. They don't look as modern. They're more square, as you can see. And let me just take one closer so you see how it looks like inside. So here we have it. You can see the Lechuza logo at the bottom. And the pot itself is quite tall. We are missing the gauge, but we do have the same system, wicking system that is, and the pot within the pot. And I discovered that actually it works pretty much the same. It does keep my leka pretty moist, even though the wick is not very thick. I discovered thicker wicks, which we'll get to, do a little bit of a better job. But anyway, it's a good alternative for a self-watering pot. It works. If you can find it at a discount, why not? It misses the gauge, but honestly, we don't really need that gauge. So that is that. The drawback with the Lechuza, this particular one, is that it is very tall. You can look at the orchid, it's just taller than the orchid herself. Now, these are perfect for droopy or pendant type of orchids, which obviously don't get very big. But for stuff like this Oncidium, they're a little bit of an overkill. They're not necessary. We have a reservoir that is this big, it's half the pot inside. It's gonna last me a whole summer. So that can be okay, but I'm also risking touching the light fixture, which is something I don't want. So this system is not ideal for everything. It is useful though. And just like the other ones, the mini Deltinis, the mini QB comes with the pawn, which again, you might be able to use with other plants with orchids. I cannot recommend it. You'll see in the link down below a video explaining why, uh, but of course that's up to you. So I don't really need the pawn, but for the price, you can see the full price was 14 euros. I paid seven. It was 50% discount, all of these. So I thought, well, you know what? That's a good price. Even though it's not necessarily super suited for everything, uh, for pendant stuff, it's absolutely suited. Just think about the pendant dendrobiums because we're gonna have a lot of water here. It's gonna be heavy, so it's not gonna fall even if the dendrobium is pendant. I'm thinking that the aphelum will do great in this. He needs a lot of water in the growing season and he's one of the orchids which are problematic for me because it drinks so much water at this moment. So these are very well suited for that. And if you can find them at a discount, you know, that's worth it. If not, I don't know if 14 euros um, or depends how much it costs uh, in the USA and Canada. Hmm, I don't know if it's worth it. That's really up to you. It looks nice though, but of course, you can also DIY something of the sorts. And I have a few ideas for you guys. So as you probably noticed in the back, I do have some tall ceramic or glazed ceramic pots. These are your typical decorative containers. Typically, Phalaenopsis orchids come in them. There are two types. There are the shorter ones and the slightly taller ones. These are the taller ones and I've seen them around in your videos. I think you can absolutely find something like this at your flower shop or garden center. Well, you can absolutely transform them into a self-watering pot. Of course, you're not gonna have that big, big reservoir unless you want to, but let me show you how I arranged mine. So I potted two orchids here. You can see how this pot is quite a lot more suited for something that droops down, but it is a replacement for the Lechuza. Inside, I have the normal transparent plastic pot. Now, here's a problem. The pot will be tight and getting it out will not be easy. So I suggest that you put a little wire or thread or something on one of the sides and just pull it up when you wanna pull up your orchid. I will actually do that. Until then, I just <laughs> need to hassle a little bit. 
So here we have it, it's a normal transparent Phalaenopsis pot and the good thing is that you can actually use transparent pots without fearing algae. Yes, it's a very high moisture environment but no light gets through these pots and also the top doesn't really stay all that moist. The bigger the pot is, the drier the top is. But it's not very very dry. I mean the bottom of the leka is moist, the very top is dry which is good because it will prevent algae. And inside you will not have algae because there is no light coming through the glazed ceramic pot. So there you have it. You can use whatever pot you want, you can check the root system. You can see I have my uh, synthetic wick here and inside these pots have a little rim can you see that that rim actually holds the pot above it so you can pour water to that level the pot will be above the water because it will sit on the rim and that bottom part will be your reservoir the pot is pretty moist and i potted this work at about four days ago. She's still wet, I still have water in the reservoir and it is one of those orchids which actually likes quite a lot of water as is this one. So these two pots are identical inside and I used the typical transparent uh, orchid pots that usually Phalaenopsis come with. But of course you can find these pots for sale on Amazon, eBay, garden centers, wherever they sell orchids they kind of started to sell the transparent pots as well. Mine are my old ones actually, I didn't purchase any new pot. All I did was purchase these two ceramic holders and there you have it, you can easily make a DIY self-watering pot without a gauge but you really don't need the gauge. It's really easy to tell on top if the orchid is wet or not. And if you make that little hook that I told you about, you can actually check it and see how much water you have in the reservoir. When it comes to these ceramic pots, you can actually have the luck to find really discounted ones. Maybe they belonged in an arrangement, maybe they're faulty somewhere, but you know, it doesn't really matter if they're not cracked or anything. I think they're absolutely perfect. And you can find various sizes that can go with various orchid pot sizes as well. So for this example, I'm using, I think this is a 10 centimeter uh, plastic pot. This is from Schwerner, but I think eBay has it as well. You can see my orchid is inside here. I potted it again for about maybe five days or so, and you can see the roots are already starting to grow here. And this plastic pot actually leaves room for a little bit of a reservoir at the bottom. You don't need a very, very big reservoir depending on the orchid. It is, however, enough to have that water there which will last you at least two weeks or so, which is great for like a inorganic media and stuff that don't really decompose. And as you can see, because I have a smaller pot on the top, things are a little bit more moist than they were with the taller pots. So whenever you'll have slightly shorter or smaller pots, you'll have more water at the top. But anyway, it's not all that much. It's not enough to create algae, I suppose. And again, because you don't have any light inside, you'll not have algae inside the pot, even if it's transparent. In this case, you can see the rim of my plastic pot is on top of the decorative pot, so it's easy for me to pick it up. And yeah, it's just trial and error at this point. You can actually find stuff that fit perfectly. Here's another idea with an IKEA mask. This is a small little felon, well, Asconopsis orchid, and I have a lot of these very tiny plastic pots. Well, you can absolutely use this I don't know, I think it's a decorative bucket, that's what it's supposed to be. It's from Ikea, it's pretty cheap and you can definitely use it as a reservoir. It has quite a tiny reservoir, you cannot put a lot of water, but you don't need actually to have a very big reservoir like the Lechuza ones on this. I don't know, you don't want to water ever. But you can definitely get away with something like this as well and you can see the orchid is already growing her roots. I have a root tip here. Look at this, she's growing so nice. They absolutely love it because the idea is the leka is just so airy, it retains a lot of air pockets and air circulates no matter what. And in a climate which is not already predisposed to molds due to cold temperatures or very high humidity or lack of ventilation, you will not have issues with this. But mind you, always try out something with one orchid or two orchids and see how things react in your climate. You might just have the bad luck to have all sorts of wrong factors that make this impossible. But definitely in a dry, dry, dry climate, I think this will work perfect. So there you go, another IKEA thing you can use. And now my favorite ones out of all of this, these are the IKEA pots. 
doesn't this look stock? Doesn't it look factory made? This is what my uh, boyfriend said. It's actually a DIY. So inside I have a tinier pot. This is an IKEA bowl called Summer. You'll find the link in the description uh, for more details on this product. You will get a pack of six of these for a few dollars or a few euros. They're actually really, really cheap and they fit into these standard or normal masks. Now, these are plastic, I find them around, but you can absolutely use something else with this. Let me demonstrate. So in my example, I'm using a plastic mask and then I'm just putting this guy on top and it fits perfectly. And as you can see, it leaves room for a little reservoir there. But this appears to be such a universal size that you can actually fit it in a glazed pot as well. Look at that. Yes, the colors don't match, but that's okay. So you can use something tall like this or even the shorter pots with this IKEA ball and it just fits. Another idea is to see if this particular IKEA ball fits into the IKEA glazed pots. Since you're in the store, you can make the fitting. I'm not entirely sure I don't have an IKEA pot at hand right now, but the IKEA pots are a little shorter. They also have that rim which holds the pot above it so you can have the reservoir. And actually with these, you don't need it because I think they will fit perfectly. So if you don't like the tall glazed pot, you can definitely go for a normal sized decorative glazed container, which I'm sure many of you have in garden centers or flower shops. I just find this so incredibly versatile. So how I used it was with some shallow rooted orchids. That's the only downside. You cannot put stuff that creates long root systems. But I have here my bulbophyllum, which again, I constantly had to water. And it's actually its pot. This was potted in this pot. You can see it was the old semi-hydro. I just removed the medium, drilled a few more holes at the bottom and just put it back into this mask and behold, it just looks great and it does the job and I don't need to water it every three days. So I think this is perfect for, again, dendrobiums or small phalaenopsis, mini phalaenopsis or other smaller types of orchids which don't necessarily have a lot of very uh, deep growing roots. So that's the only downside to this pot, sadly, but I think it fits a lot of orchids and this is actually the one we're gonna work with today. And of course, you can absolutely find other things that match. For example, you can get a typical normal pot, which is very, very cheap and just find a mask or a decorative container that suits it. This is obviously not the most fortunate fit, but it does actually fit rim to rim. Has a weird shape, but it does the job. I'm sure that if I go to the flower shop, I can find something similar. And these guys are just so inexpensive that they're absolutely worth it. This is a setup in which you cannot see the roots, obviously, uh, but for some of us, you know, it's not that important to see the root system. If it is important for you to see the root system, just reuse the clear plastic pots or order some clear plastic pots and just play around with whatever your garden center has. Get one of these pots with you and just try to fit them, see whatever fits. And there you have it, a DIY self-watering pot that's like a bead on the floor. So how do we build this? It's actually pretty easy. I'm gonna take you on the journey of actually building one. And I will be using the IKEA summer pot because I have a lot of them lying around. I also have a perfect candidate for it. So first of all, I will make some holes at the bottom because these bowls don't have any types of drainage holes and we need some. I'm using a cheap soldering iron, which turned out to be of very good quality. And first of all, I'm going to place two holes that will be my wick holders. I want them to traverse pretty much the bottom of the pot. The bigger the surface in which the wick stays, the more water it will deliver to the leka. And then I'm just placing some random drainage slits or holes on the bottom of the pot. And this is because water will evaporate and that water vapor needs to go somewhere and it should go into the leka or whatever type of medium you're gonna use. Next, I'm going to place my wick. I'm using synthetic because I have no other use for it, but any synthetic fiber, which is wicking, will work. I think the best alternative to synthetic is microfiber. So if you have a microfiber cloth, you can shred it. Or if you have a mop, that's great as well. It's already shredded. So I'm going to feed it through these holes. And there we have it. We have a wick. 
So now let's get the orchid. So here is a Dendrobium Lewisi cross with a Sulawesi. I cannot keep up with the watering this guy once. He drinks so much water. And just look at these leaves, they're just so crinkly. No, I need a proper reservoir for this guy. It appears it doesn't matter how wet it is as long as he's wet and obviously he's not as watered as it should be. So he's a perfect candidate. Oh no, there was screw on the tag. All right, I'm actually going to reuse his medium. There we have it. Oh no, okay, so I have some dead roots here. I cannot leave them on. I'm going to rinse the medium. Okay, now that's better. As a little side note, dead roots in inorganic medium are not so detrimental. In organic medium, they actually retain so much water that they spoil the organic medium and in the end you'll have a breaking down medium with inorganic medium this doesn't happen so the roots or the vellum actually just decomposes away and gets flushed and everything is okay this orchid didn't even smell bad although you could see i had some of the older roots dying off so as you can see the orchid has new roots we're good to go and as i was saying i will reuse the old medium And there we have it, we are done. Now, I'm going to guesstimate how much water I will need, so... Hmm, okay, I think I need to fill up a third of this pot with water. If it touches a little bit the bottom of the pot, that's okay, it's like semi-hydro in the end. And voila, we are now done. And that's all there is to it. And now this orchid will stay hydrated for at least a week and a half, which is great in my environment. Now, if you're wondering what am I going to do in the winter time, what you can do if you have changing seasons, well, simple, in the winter time, just don't fill up the reservoir or just put just a little bit of water. Run the water through the pot like it would be a normal pot and dump the water in the reservoir or leave a little bit of the water. If in your room, grow space or whatever it is, you have heaters and the air is dry, you can absolutely use the self-watering pot with the reservoir. It all depends how the temperature is in your growing space, the humidity, the ventilation and so on. You just need to adapt it. For me, wintertime is cooler in my grill space, so I'll just not fill the reservoir. I'm just going to run a little bit of water, have the reservoir retain just a little bit of water to last me a week at most, and I'm good to go. That's all I want. I just don't want to water so often in the summertime. And yeah, this is what you can get if you cannot water in time. But now I know this guy will be perfectly happy in this little self-watering pot. Now you might also remember the selaging that we did last time and I used a uh, pre-drilled mask because I didn't have anything else, I didn't have ideas at the time. This can work as well and let me just give you an update. It's hard to remove, I need to put a little wire or something to pick it up. She's still wet and I still have just a little bit of water in the reservoir but you can see she is still going nicely and I did not put any other uh, refills, any other water ever since we filmed her, so that's great. So you can actually use a pre-drilled mask. I call mask this little pot that masks whatever you have inside. Uh, this is a pot that I use semi-hydro with, so I already had the drills for the reservoir. You can absolutely do this, and you don't have to look inside to see how much water you need to put. You can just put water, and these guys will make sure that you don't have too much water in this reservoir. So you can absolutely do this. You just need a tray underneath, because through these holes, water can actually flow. If you are going to the sink, with your orchid and make sure that you drain a little bit so this doesn't come out on your furniture that's great as well uh, but you know when you're dealing with drainage holes uh, you might damage your furniture so be careful with it i would suggest you use a tray so as you can see you can have the benefit of having a pre-defined reservoir even in the self-watering pot you'll just have to use a tray with it and even though it's easy to water, it's hard to have a lot of them on the shelf. If you have something that doesn't have drainage such as these, you can actually place them like this 
mind you try to choose to work is that don't touch leaves or try to place them in such a way that they don't touch too much and you can save space on the shelf if these pots would have had dishes underneath you would need more space to display them that's the only downside to the pre-drilled, uh, let's say, reservoir. But that's another idea for you guys if you wanna try it out. And as a final note, I love this. It's just so cheap to make and I have the IKEA um, summer bowls. They actually call them bowls. I also have a lot of options for masks at IKEA that are not very expensive. I want to move all of my African violets in something like this. African violets require watering a lot and sometimes I forget to water them and the poor girls they actually bloomed all summer long and sometimes I see them with their leaves drooping I know they need water and I forgot about them and so on I want to create this particular system for them because it is perfect it's shallow and they have shallow roots they don't require tall pots and also they're not super 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 tall and don't take a lot of space on the vertical but they have enough of a reservoir to keep me going three weeks maybe a month with them and of course I'm going to be using soil for them, you can absolutely use whatever type of medium which is wicking with these DIY pots and of course I uh, did this with orchids but you can try it out with any other type of house plant. They will probably do better in some climates than orchids with the self-watering technique but in the end I hope you felt inspired and I hope you'll find materials and be creative and if you don't have much diversity in your area check IKEA with this system it will work a hundred percent alrighty guys thank you so much for watching this video I hope you've enjoyed it and you know the drill if you did enjoy it give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos tutorials experiments and all sorts of orchid related things and if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a video just turn on notifications for my channel and hopefully YouTube will let you know and with that said I'll see you all next time bye